So as mentioned, the first thing to realize about rates is that rates are expressed only with regards to the reactants and not the products. And the stoichiometry doesn't always equal the exponent that you raise those values to. Once you understand that, you'll find that there are a lot of different ways that rates can be expressed and can be tested. And this is true of the MCAT and of all general chemistry courses. And so what I've done is developed a mnemonic device to help organize the different ways that you might see rates show up. And I call this the double agent rate model because there are two ways of expressing rates that both start with A, and then there are problem frameworks of graphs, elementary reactions, non-elementary reactions, and tables. So double A, 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 G, E, N, T. And so what we'll do is we'll go through all of these different components, and it will provide a big picture overview of all the different ways that you might encounter rates and how to deal with them when they come up. The first two components of this double agent rate model is the two ways of expressing rates. You have the way that you can express rates using a universal equation and the Arrhenius model, which is another very valid way that you might see rates expressed and can be useful in understanding why rates change as you start changing components of the environment. So the universal rate equation that you can use is that the forward rate equals some rate constant, which is experimentally determined, times the reactants raised to some coefficient, which isn't always going to be the stoichiometric coefficient, but sometimes will be. So you can always express rates using this formula. Rate of the forward reaction equals some rate constant times the reactants raised to their stoichiometric or not raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, but raised to some coefficients. And the other way that you can express rates in a formula is using the model developed by Svante Arrhenius when he discovered a way of interpreting rates based upon collisions. And Arrhenius's understanding was that in order for a reaction to occur, you need several conditions to be met. First, you need to have the two molecules or atoms that are being interacted with, they have to be oriented in the proper way. For example, if these were two different molecules, I couldn't attach this cap to the pen if the cap wasn't oriented the right way. So it would need to be oriented according to this way, but you can't do it just with that. You also need a sufficient amount of energy. And so Arrhenius came up with the formula that you can express the rate as Z times P times E, which is Euler's constant, it's around 2.7, but you won't be responsible for that, raised to the power of the negative activation energy divided by R, the gas constant, and T, the temperature in Kelvin. And so what Z is, is the probability that these two molecules or atoms will be in the right orientation such that a reaction could occur. So when they're colliding, they have to be colliding in the correct orientation. P is the energy probability, the probability that two atoms colliding in the right orientation will have sufficient energy that a reaction can actually take place. And so you might see rates expressed as Z times P times E to the negative activation energy over RT. Or you might see Z and P combined into a simple Arrhenius factor, and it's just listed as capital A, and that can be experimentally determined as well. It's just Z times P. And then the other part is E to the negative activation energy over RT. And one thing about this formula that you can note is that the rate increases as you have a lower activation energy, a small EA, or a high temperature. And the reason that this works is because this is a negative exponent. And if you have a negative exponent, you're gonna have the biggest value if your negative exponent is very small. It's much easier to have this happen if you're raising e to the negative one power rather than e to the negative five power, for example. e to the negative five power is very small and thus the rate will happen very, very slowly. 
And so the ways that you make this exponent here small are by lowering the energy of activation or by making the temperature very, very large. Those are both ways that you can increase rate and these should be fairly intuitive. If you increase temperature, you have more collisions, collisions with greater energy, it makes sense that the reaction could happen better. And if you reduce the activation energy, it's going to be much easier to reach that transition state and then move into the newly bonded reaction. And so these are the two ways that you can express rates. You can either express them using this very common formula, remembering that the formula only cares about the reactants, not about the products, and also noting that the exponents don't always correspond with the stoichiometry, but they often do. Or you can do the Arrhenius collision model, and this could be tested not only mathematically or through a formula, but also verbally. They could say that a catalyst orients one of the substrates such that it's much easier for the reaction to occur. That's one way that you could justify a catalyst increasing the reaction rate due to these Arrhenius factors of orientation probability and energy probability, Z and P, both of which can be combined into the Arrhenius factor, capital A. But notice that, that orientation and energy are both factors, as are having a low energy of activation and a high temperature. Those are all factors that increase the rate of a reaction. And this is all expressed by Arrhenius's collision model.